So some would say that speaking about death in the way that I do is quite difficult and it is I'm not going to lie that the last podcast wasn't a challenge for me but I feel that it's an area that really needs to be spoken about many of us grieve in silence we shouldn't be ashamed we shouldn't be worried of people's opinions on how we process the journey why because it's our journey and whether you lost a child you've lost a parent you've lost a loved one you've lost a neighbor it hits us differently and it's about our resilience and how we process that grief there are stages of grief that we need to be understanding we know that we are likely to be angry we're likely to be sad we're likely to feel that we're overwhelmed i know there are professional ways of looking at grief but i think everybody experiences them in their own way and for me i lost my mama i lost my dad too but as i explained it's a different type of loss So I'll tell you a little bit about my journey to grief because I felt that my mum died several years ago before she her body actually shut down. My mum had Lewy body dementia and she was diagnosed 7 years ago. Lewy body dementia means that you lose your memory. She started to forget who I was. I was the first person she forgot and that hit me and that hurt me because I was the one that was always there for her. She used to remember my daughter and my ex-partner. But for some reason, emotionally we disconnected. And for years I really struggled to feel loved by her. So you can imagine I felt almost like a child that had been put up for adoption that you know your mom loves you but or you hope that she loves you and she made the right decision for you but she's just not there to tell you anymore. And that's how I felt. I continually cared for her. I visited her on a weekly basis. I flew her out to my wedding. I tried to make her as involved in my life as possible. But I struggled. I really did. I struggled to continue that bond with my mum, to feel like someone's daughter, to feel loved by a mum. I didn't have that person to call in my later years when I was experiencing separation and uh miscarriages etc i couldn't call on my mom i couldn't say to her mom i feel like shit or i need a hug i would hug her and sometimes she wouldn't hug back so for years for me my mom had almost died she was a shadow of the wonderful amazing woman that she was i'm like my mom but very different to her in many ways but i see myself in her face i look as i get older a lot more like her but i wonder do i even know her and i can only tell those that have parents that are still here sometimes a decision that they've made in the way that they've parented you or your siblings was the best they knew how to do at the time they used what they knew and put it into practice they used the gifts that they were given and made choices and what i don't want anyone to do is live in resentment and live in regret for the choices that other people have made in our lives my mom had depression for many many years of my life i remember being very young and my mom would be in her bedroom in the dark and i'd be left alone in the house my mom afforded us a wonderful four bedroom home three bedroom home sorry with a loft conversion and she felt that that's what she needed to do for us provide a home but i needed a mum i needed mum a mum that would be there a mum that would take me to the park i don't have memories of her taking me to the park or playing with me or tickling me or doing anything like that and that's why i overcompensate now that's why i try to be the mum that my mum wasn't for me but i should only just be me i should just be ashley's mum and the best version of that that i know to be and not in an attempt to be something that i was never given i've also learned about depression and how it can change relationships so for many years i was her carer so even though she didn't have dementia until 8 years ago she had a debilitating mental health concern that disconnected her from being able to love me in the true sense of the word 
she wasn't emotionally available for me a lot of the time. And I've reflected and I've seen that I now seek men that are also emotionally detached because that's what I've known and I am actively seeking to repair that. I want someone that's emotionally present. I want someone that hears me, that feels me, that understands me without words. I'm not asking for a mind reader, but I'm asking for someone that has dealt with many of their concerns and or let's say issues and are working through that I'm not asking for perfect my mom for many years decided not to face her depression she wouldn't go to therapy like I have she wouldn't even take antidepressants it wasn't until I was probably about 15 14 that my mom decided to make the decision to take medication and and there was a change but I was grown by then I was independent I knew how to do everything myself and I missed out on fundamental years. So as we're going through this pandemic, I ask us to address our low moods for our partners, for our friends, for our children and mostly for ourselves. Let's really try this half glass full approach because it's a daily approach. It's a daily attempt for me to get up and pray and to be positive and to be mindful and to be reflective. It's a job and that's how I see it. I see it every day. I have to log in to that mindset. The same way that I log in to my work, I log in to choosing to think differently. I log into wanting more for my child Some days I walk to school to pick her up and I just think, oh my gosh, can someone else not get her today, please? But I see her and I see me and I think, what did you want as a five-year-old when your mum picked you up? You wanted her to smile. Some days my mum wouldn't smile. So as I said, for years, our relationship was either fueled with depression and she was emotionally unavailable. And then her memory became unavailable to me. I worry that one day I will stop remembering. I worry that dementia, sometimes it's hereditary and it passes on. So I try my best not to overfill my mind with things that don't matter, to make better choices, to live in today. But I refuse to let my mum's path define me. And what I'm trying to do is learn who she was, the decisions that she made, why she made them, and forgive her for those decisions. I can sit here and say that I don't know if my mom was the best mom, but she was the best mom she could be for me. Do I think she could have tried harder? Probably. Would I have tried harder? Probably. But I don't sit here and regret and continually go back and forth on wanting better from a mum that's not here she's gone she's left me I am left on this earth without a mother but what I do have is the memories of the mum that she tried to be for me I remember her laugh I remember her food I remember her cooking the passion that she put into producing food with love and that's what I love to do so if you come to my house I'll feed you because that's the skill and the strength that my mum showed that if you can't give anything give food fill someone's belly that fills their heart fill them with whatever it is that you have I've learned about my dad that he tried Did he try enough? No. Was he weak to alcohol and women? 100%. Do I meet men that are weak to alcohol and women? 100%. Am I trying to change that? A thousand percent. There are so many great qualities that my dad left with me. He was the life and soul of the party. The party starter, the party ender, the man who had the most energy to dance the night away. 
he was very affectionate he was very playful and I have a lot of that person within me and I can't deny it and no matter how much sometimes we want to hate our parents we have to look at ourselves and wonder are we a little bit like them yeah I am was he a great dad do I remember great things that he did for me no but I also think of that the time that my parents were born my my mum was born in 1940 can you imagine what life was like in 1940 she grew up in a time where the Caribbeans didn't come to the UK she came to the UK from Guyana on a boat and so did my dad they came in a time where whites blacks and dogs were not allowed to just rent properties they came from a time that they were separated from their parents for years on end while they created a life in the UK or America and they would be sent for they lived a life that they would have to care for elders my mum looked after my mum never actually finished primary school because she had to come to look after her grandparents um, and she fought her way through and she got to the head of nursing school and I developed my work ethic from her but I also remember how how hard that must have been that you did not finish your formal education or be given the opportunities to be the child that we all deserve to be. And so I think to myself, we have to understand where our parents come from to understand where we're even going. Because we are fundamentally a huge part of who they were, their story. My dad came here without formal education and tried his hand at many things. He tried to do this. He tried to do that. He tried to. And he looked to my mum to be that financial investor in all of his dreams. I would get quite annoyed when she wouldn't. I learned the importance of education from my dad by not having education And sometimes it's what our parents don't have that teaches us what we need to have. And that's why getting my degree and getting my master's was so important for me. I've learned a lot from my parents. I've learned a lot from their loss. Do I wish that they knew my husband? Yeah. Do I wish that they knew the woman that I am today that records podcasts and tries to change the world every day? I do. Do I wish they were proud of me? Yeah. Do I wish they could tell me they were proud of me? Most definitely. Do I feel sad? 100%. I long for parents. I long for the family that I don't have. But does that stop me? I'm getting it in the future no it doesn't because I will get what I'm looking for and I believe with all of us we have to just keep the faith whatever it is that you believe in whatever it is that strengthens you that motivates you that challenges you to be different and better and have courage I want you to have courage I want you to feel strong I want you to feel motivated by my story by Shakisha's story, by Zipporah's story, that God forbid that you lose a parent that you are able to manage, you are able to grieve, you are able to sit in your loss, you are able to feel the feels, you are able to feel supported and loved by those around you, you're able to ask for help and you're able to live in their memory, remembering the lessons And most of all, I pray for your healing and I pray for your peace.